Hi, this is Virginia Warwick, um, recording a mini demonstration for the Del Plaine Art Center. And today I'm going to be exploring charcoal. Um, and what I'll be drawing today is a tool um, based on a artist tool studies that was done in... Um, in the early 1970s and the artist that I'm exploring today is named Jim Dine. He's still alive today. He was born in 1935 and in the early 1970s he did a tool studies um, where he did printmaking of tools, he did drawings of tools using graphite, charcoal, and mixed media. And when I introduce charcoal or graphite, I often use tools to draw from as a still life. And when I say still life, I mean any object that you can depict on a two-dimensional plane or in any piece of artwork. So I have an array of tools um, that I can choose from. And I chose this, this, um, this lesson because I thought that since we're in quarantine right now, many of you have access to any sort of tool. And it doesn't have to be a wrench or um, a flathead screwdriver. It can be a hammer. If you don't have access to these tools, you could use something like a pair of scissors or a toenail clipper or fingernail clipper, just a tool. So first, um, I wanted to explain the materials that we're going to be using today. Um, you'll need a large sheet of paper and I'm using um, acid-free drawing paper that's good for graphite, charcoal, and even, um, I've used it for Indian ink applications as well. And this is, this is what the cover looks like. Um, but any large sheet of paper will do. So let's open this up. And first, I would like you to experiment with the charcoal. Um, in your supply kit, you should have vine charcoal. And I have soft vine charcoal. The vine charcoal can come in different hardnesses. Um, and I prefer soft vine charcoal because it's much more forgiving. Um, and I'm going to show you why it's more forgiving in comparison to maybe a harder or denser um, charcoal. So I have a small stick of vine charcoal. And first, let me show you, actually I'm going to pull out a longer stick because I would like to show you how to properly hold a piece of charcoal. Um, when you're writing with a pencil, you usually write like this, but this is the incorrect way to hold a piece of charcoal. The correct way is a little further back on the charcoal stick, and I'm using my thumb and pointer finger, and that way you can have much more um, movement and agility with your wrist. So it, it lets you have more um, flexibility in making larger um, marks. So first, let's experiment. I would like you to first experiment with the charcoal. First, very lightly draw a line. 
and then apply a little more pressure. And you can see that by applying more pressure, you can create a darker mark and maybe a little more pressure. So using different pressures, you can create different um, variety of lines and variety of marks. And then not only can you make a thin line, but with charcoal, since it's the entire stick of charcoal is usable, you can create, now it's a little, it's a little noisy, but you can create a, a very thick mark using the side of the charcoal. So play around with the charcoal for about 20 minutes and get a feel of what kind of marks you can make. Um, also in your kit, you should have a tortilla or also called a paper stub. Now, mine is very dirty, but that's okay. And yours will get dirty too. Um, the dirtier, the better actually, because with this paper stub, you can create gradients. And when I say gradients, a gradient is a value from light to dark. So you can smear the, the charcoal. And notice I'm holding the, the paper stub like this, about halfway down the stub. Not like this, not like this. More like this, you get more control out of your hand. And then also in your packet, you should have a kneaded eraser. Kneaded erasers are awesome. Um, you can subtract the charcoal with the eraser. And you can knead the, actually that's why it's called a kneaded eraser. You knead the eraser into a specific mark. Uh, maybe a point, and you can get different marks on the subtracting the charcoal from the paper. So play around with the kneaded eraser. Um, you may have at home a pink pearl eraser. This is useful too. You can pull away the charcoal just like you would a kneaded eraser, but I prefer a kneaded eraser because you can get more specific lines and marks by contouring the, the eraser's point to a, to, a, to a point. So after you play around and get a feel for the charcoal, oh, you may have in your packet a piece of compressed charcoal. Um, and I, I usually use compressed charcoal, um, for the darkest areas of a composition when I'm doing a line study or value study of a still life. So you can get a light mark, a dark mark with more pressure, and you can use the side of that compressed charcoal. Now, compressed charcoal is less forgiving than the um, vine charcoal because it doesn't come up as easily from the paper. And then you may have in your packet a paper towel or what's called a chamois. A chamois is a piece of leather. So if you're vegan or vegetarian, maybe you don't want to use the chamois. Um, but a paper towel works in a similar manner. So I can use the paper towel to pull up and spread that charcoal. Same with the chamois. The cham my chamois is really dirty. The dirtier the better because you can 
really spread that charcoal and create what's called a ground. And I'm going to show you how and why to create a ground in this next um, drawing where we're going to depict our tool. So after you're done experimenting, I'm going to do what's called creating a ground. Now I have a big jumbo stick of charcoal and jumbo sticks are really useful because you can use the side of it and create and get a lot of a lot of charcoal on the on the paper real quick. If you don't have a jumbo stick, that's okay. You can use your thinner piece of soft fine charcoal. Now I'm creating what's called a ground because when you're using the kneaded eraser, you're going to use this eraser to create highlights. And you can't create a highlight if you don't have charcoal or a ground or um, or an uh, even slate of charcoal over the entire page. And I'll show you exactly what I mean real quick. Um, and then you can spread that ground with your chamois or paper towel to make an even, even ground. And I'll demonstrate in the corner what I mean by creating a highlight. So I'm using that needed eraser to create a highlight. If the ground wasn't present, you wouldn't be able to get that contrast between the, the mid-tone um, value of the ground and the highlight or high key value of the paper that's being shown. So let's jump right in and depict the tool. So I'm gonna I'm gonna choose something that's a little challenging. I'm gonna choose this wrench. And I'm gonna set it right out in front of me. And now that I'm thinking about it, it might be useful to um, now I ha I'm on a pattern piece of tablecloth here. It may be useful to put it on a piece of white paper so it's easier to see the shadows and contrasts. But I'm just going to go with what I have. Okay, so when I'm depicting this tool, I'm going to first start with what's called the contour line of the tool. And the contour line is the defined edge outside the tool's edge. So, for instance, the contour would be this edge outside. I'm also going to take note of what's called the access of the tool. So, I'm going to also take into consideration the center of the tool these handles, I can draw a line that depicts the center. So let's start with the contour or the outside edge of the tool, the defined edge of the tool. So I'm going to challenge you to fill your page. It's easier to do a smaller tool, but I'm going to challenge you to fill your page with the tool. So you're going to have to increase the proportions of the tool on the paper. And that's the challenge. So I'll first start on the left side of my paper. And with my eye, I'm, I'm looking at this outside edge. And you can see I'm, use, I'm going from light to dark with the charcoal. I'm using a less pressure and I'm, I'll gradually build up more line work with more pressure using my charcoal.
and I'm just doing the defined edge. Now, I've, I have the first, the first portion of the tool on the paper. Now, let's get the proportions right. One way to do that is kind of measure the tool's proportions with your charcoal. So with your charcoal stick, I would literally hold the charcoal stick up to where I already drew and, and see how I'm measuring it with the tip of my charcoal to, the, to my index finger. And I can see that this length of the handle is about two and a half of this length of the of the head of the ply or a wrench or whatever it is. So I'll go over here and this length here should be about two and a half combined to create that handle. So I'll make a little mark and I'm making a little mark. It's okay to make marks because charcoal is very forgiving, so you can always erase with your kneaded eraser or even chamois. Make a little mark and about two and a half. So this length makes up, um, equates to two and a half of this handle. So that's one way to get the right proportion. And after a while, after drawing for years, it takes years, <laughs> you'll be able to communicate your eye and hand without measuring the proportions like this. And it'll be easier to um, just casually draw the the still life tool, whatever it is, and depict it accurate, accurately on paper. So let's outline this a little bit and get the defined edge in. And then I need to keep in mind this access, what goes through the center of that handle. So I'm angling my, I'm using my piece of charcoal as a way to get that center line and see how I'm holding up the piece of charcoal in parallel to the handle. Well, I'm just going to bring it down here and draw through that handle. It's pretty accurate. And then to get the angle of this, I'm using my charcoal as a tool to measure that access or line that goes through that handle. And then I'm going to just pull it down. So let's see, it may not be at the right place, but it's at the right angle at least. So let's see here. Now I'm kind of revisiting that and revisiting those contour lines, measuring that angle to go through there, measure this angle and use this angle called negative space. So the space outside the object and we need to take that into consideration. So that is in proportion to this, which we already have in the paper, that is about double of what this is. So let's measure this and here and here. So I was a little off, should be right about here on the edge. And this should come 
and I'm, I'm starting to make darker marks because I'm more confident about where the access and the lines of the, of the tool's handle are. Then I'm going to get this, this um, part of the plier in. I'm, angle, I'm measuring that angle from here to here. Pulling it down. And see how the lines are starting to connect. And see how I'm, I'm it looks pretty messy right now, but that's okay. Then I'm going to get this negative space in. Looks like that comes down to here. Keeping in mind that access of that angle, of that handle. And here we have basically the contour of the tool. So let's get a little more line work in to define the, the um, positive portions of the tool. So I'm using what's called cross contour line work. And this, these indentations are really helping me out. So you can see how there's a little bit of volume and mass starting to form. And cross contour lines contour or envelop the shape of the tool or object or whatever you're drawing. So I'm pulling down and using line work. And I'm going pretty quickly for the sake of the demonstration, but you can go a little, little slower. And now I'm getting that circular thing in. See how the lines are contouring that shape? And I think that's pretty good. Um, and I feel like I have a drawing where I draw like Jim Dine. Um, and you're welcome to look up Jim Dine. Um, he's still alive today. He was known primarily first for his performance work, then for his drawings, and then for a heart series that he did. Um, so if you have any questions, um, Feel free to, to follow up with my other videos that I'll be presenting at the Dell Plane. And I hope you enjoy this charcoal study.